Hello and welcome back once again to a product review from Yellow Car TCG. At this point it should be fairly common knowledge that I am a very big enthusiast of card game supplies, so today we're looking at a new offering onto the market, the Zero Damage Deck Boxes. Now full disclosure, Maxime is a personal friend of mine, but this review is not sponsored. I have spent my own money buying these deck boxes, and so this review will be fully my own opinions, fully like unfettered and un-everything. I will try to be fair and also unbiased, but like I said, he is a friend of mine and I do think credit where credit will be due. Of course, there will also be some issues that I will talk about throughout the video, and I will compare them to some of the other products in my collection, and just generally you know, telling you whether or not I think they're going to be worth it. Of course, this is not going to be a super in-depth video, you know, deck boxes don't really have that much going for them, but you know, like I said, I paid for these, I'll walk you through the overall like experience of unboxing and you know, how I plan to use them and comparing them to equivalent products, and yeah, we'll see how they hold up and whether or not they are worth the money. So for the sake of this video, I'll just look at the one box I have, I did buy two because I am a fan of Link Joke and I wanted both of them. But here we've got just the one, which is the Messiah one. Uh, the inside has a dice compartment, which as you can see here, and the main deck cavity. Now when you buy these on the Zero Damage website, you'll choose your design on the outer shell, i.e. you know what color you have, like what the unit design. You've got some like Yu-Gi-Oh ones and some generic ones as well, I believe. And you get to choose what color the inside compartments are. You unfortunately cannot choose like different colors for the dice tray and the main thing. Like for example here I've chosen blue, so everything on the inside is blue. You can't have like say blue outside and a black inside. The only way to do that would be to buy multiple different ones and mix and match and customize. Of course they can be fully customized, like you know, if I pull out uh, the Chaos one I have, which you can see is a black inside. If I want to say have black dice tray on the Messiah one, I can do that get that in the frame you know you can see like it all fits it's all like cross compatible no big deal there and that's kind of similar to like the game genic ones which i will draw the comparison to in a second but with the game genic ones you buy one color you get just that one color and you have to buy multiples to mix and match and you see it's got like you know this fully removable shell which has the design of the unit on it that can then go around onto the back so that you can have everything sitting on the side when you're playing your games. It's pretty cool, and like I said, I will, it's pretty much comparable to the Game Genic Watchtower, which I'm a fan of. I've got like two or three myself, and the one thing that I think everyone is curious about and is wants to take away from is, are these effectively the same? And the short and simple answer is yes. Like if I take off the shells, you can see that the heights, the widths, and the thicknesses are all the same, and in fact, the main compartments are fully interchangeable. Like the dice tray will fit in the zero damage one and vice versa. So I don't want to like throw shade on Game Genic because they have sponsored us recently and I'm still a huge fan of their product, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that these came from the same factory in China. Like, you know, that's how things just work nowadays in the modern world. So they are fully, well, almost fully cross compatible. What's not compatible are the shells. So here's the zero damage one. I cannot put this onto the game genic one because the magnets don't exactly line up. It's not, it's not an ideal fit as you can see. And the magnets themselves is pretty much my first point of contention, which is the magnets on the zero damage deck box are significantly weaker and I think there's less of them. Like the game genic one seems to have one in the middle here for the top one, and then two for the main compartment, whereas the one on the zero damage one feels a lot looser. Like it's hard to show in a video, but if I pull this off, it takes quite a bit of force to like open this flap. Whereas for the zero damage one, it takes pretty much no force at all. And in fact, it's reached the point where if I turn around to the other side, you can see that because of like the thickness of the material and the positioning of the magnets, this one's actually like super loose. Like I can just knock it off like that. To the point where the game genic one, 
I could trust that, you know, I can throw this in my bag, jostle it around, and it would be totally fine. I don't have that same sense of security with the zero damage one. And it's not just magnets, it's just overall construction quality. Like, the materials they use are very, very similar. But if I, like, you know, try and, like, wobble the game genic one, like, you know, rock it back and forth, like, you know, twist it around, it feels really, really solid. Whereas on the zero damage one, you can see, like, there's a lot more looseness, there's a lot more leeway. Like, even on the inside material, like, this inside pocket, if I compare the two, this one just feels, like, you know, pretty solid, pretty sturdy. This one feels a lot weaker and a lot flimsier. And, like, I don't want to throw shade on the product that Maxim's offered, because at the end of the day, in terms of, like, fulfilling purpose and what it does of, like, holding your deck box, holding your dice, you know, being something you can just put into your bag and not worry about, it does fulfill the same role. It's just a case of it's not as much of a, you know, perfect quality product like I consider the game genic to be. And on the topic of throwing into your bag, the issue then comes with artwork on the shell. This is printed on. It's not like dice subliminated. It's not like woven in. I, you know, I think that if I like scratch this through, the artwork could scratch off. So if you just like you know, throw into your backpack going to locals on a regular basis, you know, after like several months of wear and tear, I could see this starting to fade. And speaking of fading, something that Maxime has addressed that I will give props and credit for him to is that the initial run of these uh, were produced a uh, defective. I don't know what the right term is, but they didn't come out right. So the first one I received actually came with this shell, and you know, my camera is pretty good, but I don't know if it comes through, but. You can see that this shell is significantly more like faded out, whitened out. Like if I bring it in really close, you can like you know, almost see like the lines of the material, you know, like the horror, like the diagonal line stripes, uh, like along here. It just shows like where the printing happened. Whereas on this one, the color is a lot deeper, a lot more vibrant, a lot less like scratchy, as it were. And like I said, props to Maxime. You know, I told him like, hey, these don't look right. You know, they feel like kind of oddly faded or printed. And he sent me replacements at no cost. You know, just said like, tell me which one, which ones you ordered. I'll get shipped new or shipped out to you. So if you do order them and yours do come out looking a bit weird or faded, you know, just reach in touch, just get in touch with the zero damage support and they will fix that for you, no problems. And as a result of that, like the correct printing feels a lot smoother, a lot nicer. So where he made a mistake, he did go to rectify that. So I will, you know, again, give credit. Of course, the one, it's a very minor thing, but the one point about having like artwork or design printed on it means that you don't have room for flexibility and adjustment. Like, for example, here, given the configuration of small on top, it needs you to have the dice compartment on top. So if for whatever reason, you wanted to have it such that your dice compartment was on the bottom and your cards were on top like this, you would either have to have the artwork upside down or the artwork mismatch like that, which is not ideal. Like having the artwork printed on means that you can only really use the deck box in one configuration, which again is not the end of the world, but it is something to consider. Like you know, given that I have it in the same setup with my game genic deck box, but some people might want to have this other way around for whatever reason. And again, it's just more of a case of it's nice to look at, like, you know, don't get me wrong, I have this art on a playmat as well, and I love it. It just comes down to your trading, like, quality and you know, overall, like, build construction for aesthetics. And to some people, that's worth it. I will say that anything to do with aesthetics is always going to be a subjective thing. Like, me personally, I'm into really minimalistic designs. You know, hence, you can see, like, my desk mat here, like... I don't like to use like big fancy deck boxes, I just use like these. You know, I just stick things in storage boxes and I don't really look at the actual deck boxes I use. Like the design is all the same as long as they fit whatever cards I have, it's all fine. So for me, like you know, if I ha have this deck box at locals and I leave it there, I'm not going to spend that much time being like, oh, I like looking at this Messiah artwork. It's just going to be there. And when you talk about like value, I feel like you can't ignore talking about price. And again, like I mentioned, I'm not being paid at all by Maxime or Zero Damage. Like, I, I have no affiliation with them yet. I don't even have like you know, 
I don't have a content creator discount code or anything like that. I am just a friend of Maxime's and I paid almost basically full price for these because I want to support my friend's business and get something decent and nice looking out of it. And the problem is, I think what really I have to dock points for is price. Now, I understand how business works. For something like this, where you have to order custom print, you have to order to a certain quantity. And that's expensive because you need a minimum order quantity for the factory to even justify producing them. So these are always like, I always knew it was going to be more expensive than these. That's not the issue. My issue is that this is almost twice as expensive. I believe like the price on these is like 50 something, like 59, almost 60 USD. Whereas for these, I don't know the US price, but I pay like 20 something, like maybe 25 British pounds for one of these. So this is you know, pretty much twice the price of this. And sure, like the aesthetics are a nice upgrade, but then you're getting a downgrade, like I said, in terms of the magnets, in terms of like the flimsiness and all those sorts of things. I could make a comment about how like the cutout positions don't line up correctly, but I think that's a really minor irrelevant point. And you know, your trade like it's one step back and then one step forward in one area, but then I feel like that doesn't quite justify the price increase. You know, these do hold like a full G zone tokens and whatnot. Like if I pull out uh Messiah here, you can see that even with my strides in top loaders and my ride deck in the top loaders that you comes in the set. These do, you know, mostly fit. Obviously the, the stride set top loaders are a bit thicker, but you know, plenty of ample space, no concerns. These will hold any deck, even a deck with a G zone. It just comes down to, is that like, you know, is that something you really need? Like you're not carrying two deck. It's not gonna be like the game genic stronghold or you know, it's not be like a full storage box where you can put like multiple decks in one. This one product is going to be one deck and that's great. And, you know, that'll fit most players needs, but it doesn't fit every player's needs. And I feel like if I'm paying that much premium for a product, I would like to have something that fills multiple needs. At least that's what I think of it. So, you know, overall, it is really nice. Like, you know, the... The smoothness of the printing, I think, is nicer to like touch on the hands than just you know the standard microfiber of the game genet ones. I will give it that, and it does look really good. You know, the printing is very clear, very crisp. The quality is nice. Again, it just comes down to how much do you personally value that aesthetics versus the price. Like for someone like me, I care about functionality over form. So the fact that the game genic is much more solid, you know. I don't see it like breaking or bending or like, you know, collapsing under weight. Whereas I could see this like bending or deforming under weight. Like, yeah, if I just like shuffle it around, you can see like, you know, it doesn't quite line up. And obviously the game genic doesn't have designs for you to match, but there's much less wiggle room there. To me, that is worth more than the aesthetic. So when I'm losing a factor, which I consider to be worth more, I think paying more isn't worth it. Uh, beyond that, I feel like there's not really much to talk about in terms of like its functionality. Like you know, I've covered all the basics. It is just you know, at the end of the day, a simple deck box for one deck that you like, that you might want to have nice. It looks really good on my shelf. I won't deny that. I could see myself like using one of these maybe now and again for like if I'm judging an event and I want to carry one deck with me and I'll like you know, maybe like if I go to Japan or whatever, it could be like a nice talking piece. But for like an everyday, like daily driver for locals, I think something like this is going to give you much more value for money and much more mileage out of it. But if you do want to buy these, you know, again, I can recommend them. They are good products, just as long as you're willing to spend that much money. I will put a link to the Zero Damage storefront in the description if you want to pick up your own. Like I said, Maxime is a friend of mine. I have no issues giving him some free advertising publicity. But... You know, I think if you want a deck box more than anything, I would recommend other options first and to only pursue this if you really, really value the aesthetics. So because of that, my final grade is going to be a B minus. As far as deck boxes go, it is a good deck box. It has good features. It fills the role fine. It just has weak uh, you know, overall construction. Like it doesn't feel as polished as a product. And all the polish goes into the design and the aesthetics, which is also feels like where most of the money has gone. 
And like I said, I understand how the business works. I understand minimum order quantity. I understand pro production costs. So I'm not, I'm not blaming him for it costing what it does. It's just that to me, I don't think it's worth the money. So that's my final grade on it. But if you do want it, go for it. And you know, like I said, it doesn't hold a uh, full size of like the design top loaders from like the premium Jack Dead set or the you know up upcoming Messiah ones. So do bear that in mind. But beyond that, it will serve all of your needs fine. So that's it for this review. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting or useful. You know, like I said, if you do want to buy your own, I'm not going to stop you. If you don't want to buy your own, I'm not forcing you to. This is just me giving my opinion and my thoughts. And again, it is fully subjective whether or not it's worth it to you. If you like our product reviews, you know, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. I do want to make more product reviews going forward. And like I said, as a judge and a player, I think it's very important that people are educated and informed about what they can, can't use, what they should and shouldn't use for official events. And you know, more knowledge and information amongst the community is a good thing. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I've been Zistra with Yellow Card Vanguard as always, and I still will be. Uh, Sound is social media, everything down below. Hopefully we'll see you guys very soon. Take care. Have a lovely day.